need some props for this one. Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Life. I'm in the middle of a bigger project and I didn't have time to film any build or project for this week, but I thought we could have a quick discussion about knife design. I get asked a lot if I would lend out templates of my knives. Now, if you've been around this channel for a while, you know that I generally don't do that. The main reason for that is that I truly think it's important that if you wanna make a knife, you design your own knife. I think you'll have more invested in it and it is more a reflection, a complete reflection of you as a knife maker. Now, a few things to talk about when it comes to knives. I know a lot of people struggle with designing knives and I did. Um, my very first knives were very clunky and it's one of these things that's very similar to other aspects of knife making. The more you do it, the better you get. Also, a really great looking knife to one person might not be a great looking knife to another person. So there's a lot of personal preference involved. I've been drawing knives for years, probably eight years actively drawing before I started making knives. I had this dream that I was gonna make knives. I was like, I wanna make knives. At that point, I started drawing and drawing and drawing knives. I remember one time I was sitting in uh, an advanced first aid class and I was supposed to be paying attention and all I was doing was drawing knives move away from that about eight months and the first knife I ever made was a drawing that I did in that first aid class. Now I'm not saying you know draw while you're at work or you should be doing something else but the first time I'd made a knife I was after I'd probably drawn 40 knives. Now I keep this folder in here knife designs. This is a place where all kinds of little doodles, sketches, um, I've got some really old ones things that will never see the light of day, things that will. This here, this was a knife that I designed a while ago. I made this knife in a video. Um, you know, lots of weird stuff that, trying out concepts. And the thing is, you draw a bunch of them, you can see a part of one knife, like, oh, I really like that. Let me take that and put that with this handle. Little mix and match. Like this here, uh, this was part of the makings of the little chubby. Uh, video I did about that and that was an iteration of a few different blades. Also the more knives you make your designs might change over time but really important I think just to start drawing knives. Check out this little sucker. This is very reminiscent of the little chubby. Uh, I might make this one as a super miniature knife but I think it's so important to just start drawing. One thing I always do as well is that if I have an idea for a knife in my mind sometimes I'll try and find some similar looking blades I've got some folders on, uh, on my phone of knife inspiration pictures. Uh, even those little, you can save things on Instagram. If I see a knife I really like the design of, I'll save that. And then I can come back to it and kind of just look at it and kind of let those ideas, those shapes just noodle around in my brain. And then I'll put those away. And when I'm actually drawing a knife, I've got a strict rule with myself that I don't look at knives while I'm actively drawing knives. I want the inspiration that's in my head to kind of flow out Un, I guess I can't say uninfluenced because it is influenced, but not directly influenced. I'm not going to look at the knife and, and try and make an exact copy. I want the concept. And ultimately, you know, there's so many different knives out there. It's very difficult to create a unique blade. Uh, this is one here that's very unique in shape, but there's a lot of little bits and pieces that are from other knives. I'd say probably my most, if I were to call it original blade, would be something like this last ditch necker. But when I first started making these little things, I was looking at some really small little knives, um, CKRT, I believe it was, uh, some knives I saw in Bass Pro Shop, and they're really small, and so that's what I wanted. And this was actually iteration of a different knife that I had made, and if, if you've seen the original build video of this one, I showed that original little knife. The, it basically just had a little finger, single finger loop, so not this back part here, but just was kind of cut off right here. But that's where this came from. Now, when I find a knife design that I like, I will turn it into a template with steel. So this is like a, a crooked finger, another different version of crooked finger, a smaller version. Uh, little EDC blades. This is my last ditch necker done bigger. This was as a request uh, for a groom. These are presents for his groomsmen. Um, here we have a little chubby right here as a template. Now, when you're setting out to draw knives and I kind of mentioned a lot of people really struggle with it. 
I've always drawn stuff. I've always doodled, I've done cartoons, and I've always been interested in drawing from a little kid. I loved it. I've, I've got books and books and books of my drawings. And so there's a certain point where I don't find it that difficult to draw, but to get exactly what I want, it always takes me several iterations. Now, a few things that really help out uh, are different templates and, and things like these. I've covered these before in older videos. These are French curves, a lot of different styles and shapes and sizes of French curves. But you know, if you're trying to draw a really nice smooth belly, I use these things all the time. Often what I'll do, if I'm gonna start drawing a knife, I will take the steel that I have and I will lay it down and I will put a line on either side and that's my design constraint. Doing stock removal, obviously, I'm not forging anything, but that represents the bar that I have to work with. And I'll start drawing within that bar and eraser, I draw in pencil all the time. You know, I'm erasing things, I'm changing things, I'm tweaking things and I'm bringing out stuff like this, all kinds of weird different shapes. You can use like the bottom of a coffee mug sometimes, but I don't draw all my, all my knives freehand. Like for example, see this was part of a, a kitchen knife and I put on here original because this was the original shape. I've changed it since then, but I'm sure if I were to match this up somewhere, this line would match up very well with this French curve. It's pretty much very similar to that. These things are very valuable in just getting the right curves, even curves. You know, this curve kind of gets progressively steeper. So depending on where you want the tip of your blade, the point and the belly, you know, if you did it back here, it'd be a very gradual soft belly, whereas you've come up here for a small EDC or a skinny knife, you can get a much quicker belly. These are very, very handy. And I mean, I think this is from Crayola. This is a Crayola. I've used this for drawing knives before. And this is like little kids drawing thing for drawing airplanes, but little things like this make a big difference. And like I mentioned earlier, when I find a knife that I'm happy with and I really like the drawing, very often before I cut out that paper, I will photocopy it and then cut out the photocopy one, put it onto the blade that I like, make that blade. And if I really like that, then I'll take the original, put it onto a piece of mild steel and cut out a template. So the next time I go to make a knife, you know, I've got the knife. This is my bushcraft. This is one of the, this was actually the very first knife making video I did on this channel. And this is its template and it hasn't changed. And I've sold a lot of these. I've been commissioned to make a lot of these. And it's just a very simple design, very similar to a lot of other knives. Like this is a classic looking field knife, you could call it. But I drew this whole thing, obviously taking some design inspiration from other blades, but this was drawn by me. And so I can say that this is truly my knife when I make it. I've made a few other knives as a request from people. This is one of them, uh, the big kitchen cleaver. What does I call that one? The matasayu or something like that. Uh, the gentleman, we had gone back and forth on the design. I'd draw something up and then he'd be like, okay, I like that, but I would like uh, a little bit more belly to it, or I'd like it a little taller. I want this point. And so it's back and forth. And it was a collaborative effort between myself and the gentleman who was a, a professional cook who wanted this blade. And the other thing, kind of getting talking to that, a professional cook, for a lot of times they know what they want in a knife because they use them. And that's another very important part about designing knives is that you use knives and the design is influenced by the thing that the knife is supposed to do. You know, if you want a skinny knife, you're gonna wanna make sure you've got a fairly decent belly on there. Uh, if you want more of a kitchen knife, it's not gonna have as much of a belly. And if you've ever skinned animals, you have a much better sense. And if you've done it, say, with different types of knives, you've got a better sense, like what a really nice belly does when you're in there uh, processing game out in the field. So the, the function kind of dictates the form. And sometimes, you know, things that are not quite as important, I say not as important, but EDC knives, right? Like it's just a knife for general purposes that can look like a whole bunch of different things. A lot of people like just simple razor blades. Um, this was a knife that's very similar to a knife that another maker makes, uh, EV Mouse, I think it is, Vox. Um, but I had never seen that knife, at least to my knowledge, when I designed this one. Uh, Obviously there's something about it and I did a whole bunch of versions and I made this knife and somebody had commented, hey, that looks like, uh, I forget the, the maker, looks like that one. So I looked it up, I'm like, oh my word, that is very similar, but it's also different. It's, you know, it, it, <laughs> it looks a lot like that knife, but it is not the same. I think that one is a little bit more, not as rounded. I've got some more flowing lines in here, but this is a knife I designed and 
it's it's great. I like I get requests for this one all the time. Um, and it's not that I'm, I'm not like worried about people taking my designs, but I think I think at least for myself, I've noticed the value of actually designing my own blades. Now there's been three knives that I've made that weren't my own design. Um, this here is one of them. This was actually a drawing that I was emailed and I'll tell you, I love the design of this knife. I've got a build video on this one, but the gentleman that wanted this knife, he drew it out and I literally printed it off, scaled it proportionately, and this was entirely his design. Now he's given me permission to make more knives like this and I've been requested to make more knives like this, but this was one he designed and he wanted me to make it for him. And so I'm not gonna make this one again. The only exception to that might be, I might make one for myself in the future. He's, he said I had permission to do that, but ultimately this is his knife design. Uh, there's another gentleman that has had me made two blades and they're identical blades. And those were exactly his design, the point where he actually sent me a little clear plastic template and I literally took that template and laid it on the steel and did that. The other time that I've done somebody else's design was when we did the simple one of the simple life build alongs and that was zombie Joe knives. I've, I've got it right up here. Stand by. And this was one knife that the template was available because zombie Joe had made it available uh, but that's it right here. And so I had nothing to do with the design of this knife. I made this exactly to the parameters that he had designed it as. So that's just some things to think about. And I, I know I, I hear a lot, a lot of people struggle with making knives, but ultimately I think it's the best thing for you to do is just force yourself, say, hey, I'm gonna design this knife and it's gonna be a true representation of myself. There's also the aspect that if you draw a knife with a whole bunch of weird, complicated this and that, and then you go make it, Sometimes you're limited by your machinery, right? Like, oh, I, I don't have a contact wheel that can do this size of radius or something like that. Well, now when you go to draw again, you kind of draw to the abilities that you have within your shop. If you don't have small contact wheels, you might not be doing fine finger grooves like this. And then also, when you draw a knife and then make a knife and feel it in the hand, there's a mental connection that happens in your mind where you can now look at a knife and you kind of get a sense of what it would look like. And the more times you draw a knife and then make that knife, the more you understand the connection to how a knife looks, to how it feels, how you hold it. And portions on knives are very particular to different people. You know, some people like really thick handled. I, I think lately I've fallen very much into a thicker handled knife. And uh, some of the knife inspiration I've been gathering off the internet, a lot of these guys are making these really nice little EDC blades, but with maybe like one eighth inch G10 and just very mildly contouring the sides of it. And I think it looks great, you know, as opposed to this is probably more to my style, right? I mean, we didn't have this dimension when we were making this knife. So I don't know, I think that's quarter inch or three eighths G10. And this is kind of how I do my knives. They're thick, but some people not, might not like that. And when you're designing knives, thinking about that, you produce what you had designed and then use it. The next time you go to make a knife, you can have these little tweaks, these little iterations in your head, like, oh, I love that knife, but it, you know, it gets a little hot in my palm right here. Well, now we can maybe contour it a little bit and shape the handle or use thinner material. It's kind of a complete package in my opinion. Um, if you wanna be a good knife maker, you also need to design knives. And I think the more you design knives, the better you'll get at designing knives, the better you'll get at making knives, and you're a more complete knife maker. If you have any questions specific to knife designs, leave them in the comments, and I will do my very best to give you some more feedback. Maybe we'll follow up this video uh, with specific questions you guys might have. I'm just gonna thumb through here and see. Um, okay, so this was a Chanto knife. I drew this one. This one says Ebb's knife because he actually wanted a bigger blade, so I, I kind of designed a knife. This was based loosely off uh, the chubby, little chubby, no, the chanto. This was the chanto. I don't know what I called that knife. But anyways, he wanted that with a tanto type tip. Very much keep everything the same, but a tanto tip. And you know, there's a certain sense where I look at this blade and I see this handle right here. To me, that almost feels like a signature style because I've made a lot of knives like that and when I see that handle, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's familiar. It looks normal to me. Where some folks might do knives that have, you know, maybe something that comes back in here. I've never done that before. And I like the way that looks, but it just doesn't come to me when I'm drawing. So there's a certain sense where 
there's a lot of great knife makers. Um, there's a lot of great knives. But when you draw your own knife, you can kind of impart your own styling into it. So I encourage you guys, if it's difficult for you to draw knives, give it a shot. Just, just start drawing, start drawing. Here's the thing, paper's cheap and drawing something on paper is not a lifelong commitment, right? If you don't like it, you can throw it away, you can burn it. Or like I do, I keep all these things. It's a barbecue knife, it's changed. Um, I've done one knife that I drew entirely on computer and that was this Tonto. I'm sorry, you probably can't see these very well because of the exposure, but here's another kind of takeoff. And I think this is part of what inspired the little chubby. It was that knife right there. Okay, you can see a little better like that. And you know, these are all just in here. I got these glued together, that's weird. But I keep these here and sometimes if I want a brand new knife, I'll come here and I'll be like, okay, where's something? You know, where's, where's, where can I pull some inspiration from? And here's a classic example. This was me designing the little chubby and there's three versions of it. And I didn't like this one, I didn't like that one. This ended up becoming the little chubby. So it's kind of a process, right? You kind of, I don't know, it's interesting, it's fun. This is actually one of the fun parts for me. Uh, here's the swagger. I called this one the, the Persian fighter. My first name for it was the swagger knife. And this is very reminiscent of that style of knife, right? Like, it doesn't look like I've never seen that before, but this was my version of it. These are all lines that I put in there. And I said, I like that, I don't like that. And then tweaked it according to my personal preferences. And I think that's very important. Anyways, next week we are going to have, hopefully if I can finish it up, a really cool project. Uh, well, I kind of want to tell you, but maybe I shouldn't. Okay, if you made it this long in the video, <laughs> maybe you deserve to hear. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to make a forging press out of a log splitter and it's nothing new, but I'm excited how easy this is looking to be. So that should come out next week, this week with knife talk, talking about knife designs. I can't use knife talk, that's taken. But anyways, like I say, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And uh, one thing I've done, I'll, I'll actually show this too. So I restored a buoy for an, Bowie knife for a neighbor and I really liked the profile and I actually traced it out here. Now I'm not going to take this exact thing but what I might do sometimes is I'll come here and I'll put some light paper over it and trace it out a few times and then just put it away. And that muscle memory, the connection that happens, next time if I want to design a buoy, I won't look at this. I'll be like okay well, let me try and and that somehow it's changed a little bit and enough to know that okay that was my inputs. You know, inspiration is what moves us forward. And you can be inspired and, and make something based off inspiration, but to do a direct copy, I don't know. I, I just, I think you would enjoy the knife better if you drew it out yourself. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a fantastic weekend. I hope things are going great for you wherever you're at. And we'll be back next week with another video. Cheers. Oh, sorry, I'll say one more thing. There's a lot of knives that I design and make that I don't like. Um, here, here's one I did years ago and I called it like a French knife or something, a French picnic. I don't know why I even named it that, but I made this knife and I didn't put scales on it. I just kind of patterned the handle and I'll never make this again. But that's also part of the process of the failures. I've made some knives that I think are ugly and uh, you kind of learn to steer away from those things, you know, for the next one. So hopefully this stuff helps. And uh, like I say, any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Cheers. Okay, I think we're done. Oh, and another thing. <laughs>